Um, I was just asked a very interesting question about uh, for what amount of money would I <laughs> would I tell an, 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 let's say an untruth and it's a really interesting question it's like let's say um, what could be a context uh, oh, I, could, I could use my old career like a stock you know if, if I told a uh, if I was going to make a lot of money and told a lie, would I today, like, uh, you know, do that if I was going to make a lot of money? And today, my answer today is I wouldn't. And the, the reason I, I wouldn't make, even though by being dishonest, make a lot of money, is because um, I wouldn't make a lot of money is because um, I believe in karma. And actually, the, the higher you are spiritually, the more negative are the ramifications of being dishonest. So it's like, um, so there's, you have a greater negative karmic payback when um, uh, you reach a higher spiritual level than when you're at a lower spiritual level. Because you're, you're, supporting, you're supporting more and uh, more people are relying on you because now you have a uh, have a perceived uh, people perceived you as trustworthy so you have more power in the in the world so when you're perceived as trustworthy and honest for you then to say an untruth which means that you know you know to take money so that other people lose money then it means then I'll have a huge uh, a large amount of karma to pay back to the universe now, if I'm dishonest and everybody knows I'm dishonest, and then I sort of say another dishonesty, where no one takes any notice of me, mm. there's less, you know, there's less, there's less uh, karma. So it's like if every day I say, if every day I, I have a reputation of being a liar, mm. and I just say another liar, there isn't really much karma because no one's going to take any notice of me. You know, because we, we all know he lies all the time, so no big deal. If I've now got, if I'm now perceived or as someone who's always been honest, always been reliable, and then I suddenly say, like, um, buy stocks in BT. You know, you're going to make a lot of money, and yet someone's paid me to give that endorsement. And I know that the endorsement's not real. Um... Uh, and then I suddenly say, hey, you know I'm honest, buy BT, but I've just taken two million pounds just to, to say that to you guys. Mm. Then my karma to the universe is now greater, you see, mm. because th there's going to be a lot of downfall, you know, because you guys, uh, you have a, and actually at the time I do have a lot of power and a lot of trust in the universe. Because I've now got the reputation of being authentic, being truthful, being honest. And usually when, the, you see, the, the, the higher you go, unfortunately, the temptations get bigger. This is another thing in spiritual work, if you're doing spiritual work. It's like, um, when you get higher, you usually get bigger temptations, just unfortunate. You see, so, um, because uh, now you have a lot... You, you see this a lot in in the corporate world and in there was something on football wasn't it where the top football people were, were getting paybacks uh, from things and there was a lot of corruption there you see it in companies where there's a lot of corruption um, you hear a lot about these corruption scandals all over the place and uh, often people who have a lot of perceived power when they go into corruption for money you know, there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of there's quite a big fall, and a lot of people go down. So, for example, uh, like a lot of a lot of a lot of a lot of companies go bankrupt because of corruption, dishonesty. So, hence the thing of like, um, and then there's um, like companies uh, in the stock market. I mean. <clears throat> I'm not an expert on Enron, but everybody remembers Enron, I think. Uh, that was a big, st spectacular stock market crash. 
Mm. So it's like you, you, you fiddle the accounting practices, you show that the company's making more money than it really is making, you have lots of offshore funds to obscure the accounting practices. And then you, you make, it seems like the company's making a lot of money and so the investors trust that the company is honest, they trust that the accountants are honest, they, tr they trust that the regulatory system is honest. So they put their money in, and so there's this perceived trust, of course. If there's a lot of trust, and it seems to be that that mm. company is trustworthy, they put more and more money in. Mm. And then suddenly, when, when it goes down, so there's a lot of, um, <coughs> you know, that, that's, a, that's a lot of, that's a lot of um, if it was trustworthy and it's broken trust, then and there's a lot of negative payoff karmically, that karma is due. You know, those people, and the people, the highest ranking people, have a lot of karma. Maybe the, 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 the employees who don't know what's going on don't have any karma. They, they were ignorant. You know, the, you know, the toilet cleaner is probably going to get no negative karma because they weren't in on what was happening at Enron. But the top executives who knew what was happening and were fiddling everything, you know, that's a lot of karma because, uh, you know, there was a lot of um, per perceived power. So also, for, you, know, sp uh, you know, one of the worst ones is spiritual teachers. You don't want to be like a spiritual teacher and be dishonest. Mm. Don't recommend it if anyone's trying to be a spiritual teacher because um, you you know that your karma is going to be magnified. Mm. There's one thing for a nobody to like lie, but you you know um, for uh, spiritual teachers, if they um, you know if they uh, wantingly go into dishonesty, that's there's going to be a high price. Especially if you perceived, um, if a lot of people trust what you're saying, then there's going to be a high, comically a high price. So it's not, it's not worth it. Like if someone goes like, to me today, here's ten million pounds to lie about BT for like ten, here's ten grand. Like for me, it's like uh, that. I know that would have a high price comically for me. Actually, while I was like this, I. There was a time when I was in active addiction where I was dishonest all the time and people knew I was a twat. So, <laughs> so I was just like, you know, I'd probably try and lie, and, but everyone knew I was like a twat. So it's like, you know, there wouldn't be actually that much of a karma. So even though I was lying mm. at that time, I wouldn't have much of an effect and people kind of know. That. So it's like another lie doesn't really do much damage. Whereas if, if you've got a reputation or if you're a spiritual teacher or something and you lie, you can do a lot of damage. And so hence, you know, the karma, you know, it's like um, the same thing would happen in a, in, a, in, a, in a corporation. So if you're like one of the employees, if you lie, it doesn't really make much of a problem, you know. But if like the, if the senior management are, uh, are dishonest, then that has a huge in, that has a huge influence for the whole corporation. You see, so so I remember Hawkins once saying um, there was a lady asking him a question, and uh, there was something like this person was having everything going wrong in their life, you know. And, and the person was sort of saying to Hawkins, I can't remember the exact thing. Like, you know, how can God allow this person? They've had they haven't had any lucky breaks. It's like been one huge disaster movie. So they say, how can God allow this? And he says, well, you don't know what the karma is of this person in a past life. You see, you know, you don't know what the karma, and I think he said something like, you don't know what the karma of Genghis Khan is. Mm. <laughs> you so know, the karma of Genghis Khan. Oh. Uh, you know, Genghis Khan could be Adolf Hitler. If Adolf Hitler gets reincarnated as your neighbour, <laughs> And you feel sorry for him, you know, it's like, God, you poor so Like, everything's going wrong for you. It's so unfair. <laughs> your, house, your house got flooded, your neighbour stabbed you, the dog bit you. <laughs> like, why is God treating you so unfairly, you know? But you don't know why God's treating you so unfairly. You see, so hence the thing of, like, so do spiritual work. I guess the, the message is, if you're doing spiritual work, uh, and you're pursuing integrity and honesty and spirituality and love. Uh, one of the guiding, you know, one of the greatest things I liked mm. with Hawkins was this thing, of, and it's something that I bear in mind, you know, to, to be in the interest of the highest good of all concerned. 
I love that statement. You know, it's a very, it's something that can straighten one out with one's motives in, in any situation. Is what I'm saying or doing in the interest of the highest good of everyone concerned? And then you can, you know, often even I'll, I'll pick out when I'm self-centered if I say that statement. You see, you know, well, this will be mostly good for me and less good for everyone else. So, you know, and if it's a subtle thing, I won't bother about it. Like, okay, there's four biscuits on the table and there's only like three of us here. So I took two biscuits. I probably would get, I probably allow myself to do, to do that, you see. That's not a big one. But if it's like, you know, if it's like um, I'm here and I'm going to like steal all the food in the fridge and another person hasn't got any money to buy any more food, that's a bigger thing, you see. So if I take all of that, the person's going to starve to death because they haven't got enough money to buy any more food. So then that's, that's, uh, that, that's quite selfish, you know, that would be very, very self-interested. Uh, if, if I took a payback <clears throat> to endorse a product because I had a reputation uh, and lots of people are going to lose out collectively, mm. then that's quite a big karmic price. You know, and so I would, I would have a quite a, because I, I'd be, I'd be consciously having to know that all that suffering I'm going to create, I'm going to get this money. So it wouldn't really be that enjoyable for me. It's because, because I know that I'm going to get that. That's going to come back to me eventually at some point. Or there is another way of doing it off. Otherwise, I'd have to do the thing. So when I went into a twelve-step group. I already think the 12 steps if you've got an addiction is a great group because they have step nine, which is to make amends for all the wrongs you've done in the past. So it's a little bit like, um, um, you, can, you can, here's the thing, like if you've done a lot of bad things in the past, before the karma hits you, you can pay it off before. So let, let's say, uh, and it's kind of like a divine thing, like I was a compulsive overeater, my addiction was food. Um, and um, so, um, so that meant I was quite selfish around food, I was quite self-centered, I thought about myself, I'd finish up all the food all the time. Um, so I was very, very greedy. So I did a lot of damage and I was quite self-centered around my selfish behaviors and dishonesty around food. But then, before that hits me in the 12-step group, you do step nine, which is like, you help other people recover from food addiction. So you're now like paying back through service to the universe for those things that you've done wrong. And that often will mean that you pay off the karma before it hits you, mm. you see. So you can pay off your karma by good deeds and good service before it actually comes and slaps you in the face. So another thing with spirituality um, is most people who are incarnated here have negative karma. I mean, this domain is quite likely you've not been a saint every day for your whole life and in your, all your past lives, it's quite likely you've got a lot of stuff. So one way to clear your karma is just doing selfless service and trying to do good in the world. And therefore you don't have to get hit. You get hit less by a thing. And the thing that we learned in the 12 steps is whatever you've done that's been bad in the world, try and correct that by doing good in the exact equal and opposite way. So I was like, I did a lot of damage by being self-centered around food. So a way to clear that karma, and it seems to work spiritually, is to help people recover who have that problem. So if, like if I was a gambler, and, uh, and, and I did a lot of damage gambling, then I could help gamblers. That would be Gamblers Anonymous. If I was an alcoholic, and I used to go to pubs and smash up the furniture and, and hit people on the heads with bottles of vodka when I was angry with them, then I can clear up my karma uh, quickly and not have to face someone hitting me over the head while they're drunk by just finding an alcoholic and trying to help them to recover from their alcoholism. So you sort of clear up. So it's, it's a wonderful thing. So, you know, you have... Uh, uh, then you have the... The, the, the love addiction fellowships, you know, it's like if you're love addicted, it's like you tormented someone, you wouldn't let them go. And you said, if you, let, let, if you dump me, I'll commit suicide, so you've got to stay, so you blackmail them to stay with you, so they can't go anywhere. 
That's not, that's, not, that's not nice there, but people in love addiction do that, you see, because they, they're addicted to their, their drug supply. So instead of doing that and carrying on in your love addiction, you, you go to a 12-step program and you help other people's recovery. You, go, you help them stop pestering, <laughs> pestering the person, you know. Let them get on with their own life. You don't have to keep, you know, pestering them to come back. So you do that and you pay off your karma. Otherwise, if you don't pay off your karma, you know, you tend to get these things come back. So if, you, if I was like, like I could be dishonest for an endorsement, I could be dishonest to all you guys, and then I could spend all the money, buy a Rolex, come, come back here next week with a big Rolex in my hand. But probably in a few weeks, I'm going to meet a guy who's going to like tell me to invest my money, and then I lose it all, you see? And then I have to sell my Rolex at the pawn shop. So... So you see the, the universe is like, like a mirror. So it's best, you know, the, the, the prayer of, Saint, you know, like I love the prayer of St. Francis, you know, um, uh, who says, don't seek love, be of love. Mm. Uh, don't seek compassion, be of compassion. So the best way is like to give to the work, to the universe, rather than to take from the universe. So, um, so if someone was, giving me money now so that I get personal gain and then lots of other people lose. Um, the thing when you're spiritually aware, and for me it's going to be doubly bad because I'm aware of karma, so I can't plead ignorance to the universe. Like I just didn't know that it was a bad decision. It's like I, I would have to knowingly, now that I know that the, the laws of karma, to knowingly know the laws of karma and still to do it, and if you're a trusted person to do it, means that your karma is stacked up even higher. <laughs> so hence, you know, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't recommend it. You know, if if you're like, a, if you're known as an honest and trustworthy person, to to you, your your karma is much higher than if everyone knows that you're just lying and cheating all the time. Your karma is much lower. In fact, you might not even have any karma because no one believes you. Mm. It's like you know, and as soon as you come in. If no, everyone knows that you're, you steal all the food, everyone's going to lock up the food, so you know, you're not going to have much of a chance. Whereas if, if everyone knows you're honest, and then you steal all the food, and no one knows where the food's gone. <laughs> you know, so you have different levels of karma. And it's, very, that's, it's also quite similar, and like I said, it's like in, um, in, in court, in court, like, if you're insane, they give you a, a less, a lower sentence mm. than if you knowingly know what you're doing, then you get a higher sentence. It's like that with karma, <laughs> you know? It's like, it's like, uh, you know, you're addicted to donuts and you're dumb, and you take, you take someone's donuts. That's a, but you're quite dumb, and you don't know about karma, and you don't know it's bad, you don't know it's affecting the other person. Is, is not that much of a high karma. But now if you're consciously aware of it, mm. and, and you know that that's going to create suffering to a person, and then they're going to suffer, and you know it's a bad karma thing, and you still do it, then your karma is much greater, you see. So hence, you know, so, so once you become, <coughs> become, it's like the universe also knows that you know more, so you know, mm. your karma is higher, so you can't, so hence the thing, See, even if you've, now, now you're unfortunate if you've listened to this video, because now you know, now you know so you can't plead ignorance. Mm -hmm. so, that, so there's a drawback of going in spiritual, like sometimes it's good to be a dumb, a dumb dishonest person. Mm. Once you pursue spirituality, then you, you have to knowingly mm. turn your back on what you know is real. You see, so it's harder now. So for mm. me, like if, when I was in active addiction, I could have, I could take a payback to be dishonest and I'd have less karma. Mm. Now for me to do that, I know that my karma would be magnified uh, dramatically. Um, so, so that was a great question, you know, like um, I remember um, Hawkins once making a joke about it. It's like, if you're, sp if you're spiritual, and you're going to fall for a temptation, at least do a big temptation. <laughs> like, you know, don't sell your soul for ten pounds. I mean, it's like, if you're going to sell your soul to the devil, at least take, like, 50 million or something. 
<laughs> I'm not sure if I, whether that's a good piece of advice, but there you go. I'm not sure. I think he was saying that as a joke. I don't think he was being honest on that one.